What is going on YouTube? Bryce builds it all, your favorite AMP IA and part 147 instructor back again with another video. In this video, I'm gonna do something a little different. I don't usually do how to's, but somebody asked me the question of, how do you install in time a magneto? And this particularly is a slick magneto, but I'm gonna go ahead and do those because I got two magnetos to put on this 182 airplane that I've been working on. And if that is interesting, if the video performs well, maybe I'll do some more of those in the future. So stick around. First things first, let's get the cowling off. I already did that. Let's get the number one spark plug out. Just one, bottom or top, doesn't matter. Let's get a number one spark plug cylinder out and let's set the engine to its compression stroke. Now, I'm going to show you something. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this thing back. It's on the number one compression stroke already. It's very important when timing your magnetos that you actually fire the impulse coupling. So if you listen, you'll hear them go off here in just a second. There you go. There they were. So that, that loud click was the impulse couplings. The other click you were hearing was actually the, the starters engaged, which is not supposed to be this little gear right here. Then on this one, I have my timing marks. I have top center, 20, 23, and 25. So I'm gonna go back until 23 lines up, and this, this 20 should line up with this dot. Um, but I'm actually going to get that number from the engine data plate. The engine data plate will tell me what the magneto timing is supposed to be. So I'm gonna get that and then I'll set that on that number. And here you go. I don't know if you can see it in here, but right here it says spark advance and it says 23 degrees. So again, what I did was I set this little timing mark on 23 degrees. Now it's very important, very, very important that you're on cylinder number one and you fired the impulse coupling. And I'll, I'll show you why. This here is an impulse coupling, and when you see this little paw right here grabs this. And as I continue to turn it, I'm gonna to try to do this one-handed, the impulse coupling continues to rotate, but the magneto doesn't. You see how I'm rotating the outside? This right here is what's engine driven, and this is stopping it from turning. So if you don't fire that, your magnetos won't actually be timed properly. Pro tip, this magneto will shock you if you spin it. Okay, current will come out of here and it, it won't feel good. This is your P-lead. This is what connects to the ignition switch to ground and keeps the magneto safe. So if you're going to take this P-lead off, make sure you have removed the ignition harness. Now the ignition harness, you'll notice it has you know three screws in it. And it's, this is designed so that the ignition harness can only go on one way. It doesn't matter if it's a six cylinder or a four cylinder, this will only fit on one way. So you don't have to worry about timing the magneto wrong. But take the ignition harness off, that way the magneto can't fire a spark plug and fire the engine. And then also be very, very careful not to rotate it with your hand here, because that will shock you right in the palm of your hand. Ask me how I know. Now, I don't know how well you can see this, but I got everything disconnected off the left and right magnetos. So now it's just gonna be taking off these half inch nuts and these hold down plates. Careful not to lose those when you pull it out and careful not to lose the rubber grommets down inside of this when you pull that out. All right, I have my new magnetos here. Here's my old magnetos. Rusted impulse couplings is certainly not something you want. I don't know if that is maybe was causing the impulse couplings to slip when the engine was hot and trying to start, but that's obviously the issue we're, uh, we're trying to fix with this. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this pin right here and I'm gonna stab it in the magneto to time them for the number one cylinder. So let me show you how I do that. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is get the rotation on my magneto based on this sticker right here. You see this says left or left hand rotation and that's not talking about the engine, the, the rotation of the engine, that's talking about the rotation of this magneto. Um, old one was left as well. Now in this distributor block, I have a left, I have a right, and I have an X. This is left hand rotation, so I'm going to use this bottom hole which says L. Where did I put my alignment bin? Oh, this is why I can't set things down. I'm an idiot, where'd it go? What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try to angle this where you can see. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this L pin right here. I'm gonna push it in slightly and then I'm gonna rotate the magneto until I feel it find its little groove and it will pop down in there. Okay, I'll have to edit some of that out because it, it just, I had to end up shining a flashlight. It helps if you shine a flashlight down in this hole so you can see a little better, but the pin should bottom out when you get it and I'll show you what I mean. It's got like a little chamfer in it right there. Hopefully the camera focuses. So when you put it in, in the number one firing position, it should bottom out 
all the way to that chamfer. Now it's very important that you do not spin the magneto with, once this pin is in here. You will bend it and you can also mess up the magneto. So don't do that. And you're gonna be really tempted when you stab it on the engine and, and put the, the plates on it to rotate it. Don't put the plates on it and then pull the pin out. Then you can rotate it all you want. But I wanna show you that these are firing right now. These are in E-gap. These are firing the number one cylinder and the impulse couplings are disengaged. Otherwise, this little paw right here would be on this pin. You have to, you're going to have to probably reach in there and get your finger in there and release that impulse coupling as it comes around. So now I got this little timing box hooked up. The pin is in there. And if I just barely, just barely touch this, it goes off. So when that light goes out, that's when the magneto is actually firing. So when it beeps is when it fires. So this is going to be my right magneto, and this one over here is going to be my left. I'm going to go ahead and install these. I'll show you what that looks like real quick. I'm going to come around to the left side because it's a little easier for the right side. Sorry. The magneto is going to go in this hole right here. So the magneto will go in first. It's going to line up with these two rubber bushings hopefully you can see that it's going to line up with these two rubber bushings here this is a spacer plate and then these hold down plates will go on with a lock washer and a nut it's very important always use a brand new gasket every time i do realize that i'm blocking the majority of the shot and you can't actually see what i'm doing so i am sorry for that but i kind of know how these are oriented inside the aircraft because i can see them so i'm gonna do my best to line these up slide that into place and then put the hold down plates on snug but with loose enough that i can still rotate the magneto so here we go i'm gonna set my wrench up here for just one second stay there we go ah oh, i just broke my fingernail on a hose clamp that really hurt and there you go. That's really it. So now I have the, the buzz box connected. Um, I can reach up here and I'm going to spin the magneto left and right to uh, adjust the timing because the gear inside isn't spinning now that it's connected to the engine. So if I rotate the magneto, I'm rotating the timing of the magneto without changing the timing uh, to the engine. Of course, I already pulled that pin out. Make sure before you rotate this at all, you pull that pin out or you will bend it and you'll damage the plastic gear inside of here. But if I grab this magneto, you hear it's real quiet. If I rotate opposite, so it's left hand, if I rotate up, it should go off here pretty quick. Oh, there it is. Let's back it off with a little bit. I'm gonna set it right there and then I'm gonna spin the prop. I'm gonna see if it goes off at 23 with the prop. ground. It's actually perfect. So, I might see you out here, depending on how long I've been going with this. Uh, so if, if that's the case, um, I'll, fill, I'll roll the outro. If not, I'll, up, I'll let y'all watch me put it back together on like a speed loop. Um, but all I gotta do now is torque the magneto. That's gonna be 60 inch pounds. Put the um, P lead back on it, put the ignition harness back on it, and this magneto is done. So I'll go ahead and I'll move over and I will do uh, the other side. It's gonna be the same, just a lot more limited access because there's the Garmin control panel and the crankcase breather and some other things in the way. So I'll do that.
So there you go, everybody. That is how I install magnetos, um, slick magnetos. I'll add that Bendix magnetos aren't really any different. Uh, the main difference being that they have a plastic gear in there, so do slicks, but they have a gear in there, and one of the teeth is printed red, um, and that's the firing position in number one. So you take the vent window out, and you turn that tooth around until you see the red tooth, and then you put a special holding fixture in there and stab the mag. But other than that, everything's just about the exact same. P leads look a little different, but who cares? Anyways, that's gonna do it all for this video. I hope you found it entertaining and also a little bit helpful. If you're a pilot, if you're a student in a 147 school, whatever, if you're not sure how to time a mag, I hope you know this, uh, this helps for you. So as always, like, subscribe, um, go build something, follow me on Instagram, I said that backwards. As always, like, comment, subscribe, don't forget to join the Discord, follow me on Instagram, and as always, Go build something and be easy.